Well, good evening, everybody. There's a sort of eerie silence over the building. I want some echo on the mic as well. It's really good to see you. Welcome if you're here with us in the building. Welcome if you're watching us online as well. It's great to have you here. Um, I wonder if this is your first um, refresh service in the building. Um, could you stick your hand up for me? Hey, fantastic. That's most of us. That's good. That means that we're all sharing and we're all getting the opportunity to enjoy these services. Um, hopefully, I know it's so strange. I know it's strange with the masks and, and, and being in the building this way and, and sort of fellowshipping by waving at people across the room rather than standing and talking face to face. But I really hope that you can relax and, and, in, and enjoy this service um, even despite all of the restrictions. Um, we do ask that you stay in your area during the service. Now, that doesn't mean you have to stay glued to your chair. Um, you can stand and, and you can, can move about in the kind of section that you are. Um, if you need the toilet, that's fine. Um, you are allowed to leave for that. Um, but we do ask that you use the one-way system to go out to the toilet and then back to your seat. And that just avoids you awkwardly bumping into somebody um, on the way around in case that happens. Um, and I really hope, what we're hoping and praying as we become more and more kind of used to meeting in this way, is that you just feel more and more relaxed in, in, in being able to worship in this capacity as well. The, the government are saying at the moment we're not to encourage congregational singing, but you know, singing isn't worship. There are many other ways that we can worship God together. We can't sing, but that doesn't mean that we can't speak the words of the songs over ourselves. It doesn't mean that we can't involve our bodies. Hey, here we go. All right, you can raise your hands if you want to in praise. You can um, put your hands out in front of you in surrender. You can give yourself a little hug. I don't really mind what you want to do. If you're feeling really brave, you can even have a bit of a wiggle, a bit of a dance. You can get involved. That's okay. That's all right. I've been thinking a lot today and in the lead up to this service about thankfulness, about gratitude, about recognizing the blessings that we have in God. You know, we turn on the news and we open our Facebook feeds at the moment and then it's looking, it's looking dark again, isn't it? It's all the rising in cases and the struggling NHS and the, oh, are we heading back into lockdown? Are we going there? Are we going there? And it's very easy to kind of get on top of us. It's very easy for us to just think everything is, is tough and everything is difficult and everything is sad and hard and all the rest of it. But, you know, the antidote is remembering the many, many blessings that we have. The antidote is taking time to be thankful to God, to worship him for who he is. Paul writes this to the Colossians. He says, therefore, as God's chosen people, that's you, holy and dearly loved, clothe yourselves with compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. Bear with each other, bear with the restrictions. Forgive one another. If any of you has a grievance against someone, forgive as the Lord forgave you. And over all the virtues, put on love which binds them all together in perfect unity. He says, let the peace of Christ rule in your heart, since as members of one body you were called to peace, and be thankful, and be thankful. He says, let the message of Christ dwell among you richly. Teach and admonish one another with all wisdom through psalms, hymns, songs from the Spirit, singing to God with gratitude, talking to God with gratitude in your hearts. It's all in your hearts. It doesn't matter if we can't shout at the top of our voices tonight. We can still lift our hearts to him, can't we? And whatever you do, whether in word or deed, do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. So we're here to enjoy this time together. We're here to worship together. We're here to be thankful. And I just want to encourage you now as we begin to sing these songs, as we hear from um, this prepared word from Tim this evening, just consider all the things that we have to be thankful for together and individually this evening. And let's lift his name high together. Let's just pray before we start. If you're able, would you mind standing with us? I think it's a good thing to stand together. We're all here in the same space. They're not coming for us. It's all right. They, they've moved on. Let's just pray. <coughs> Heavenly Father, what a pleasure it is to be in this place, gathered together as your family, Lord Jesus. And God, now as we begin to worship, as we begin to hear these songs played over us, God, would you just allow our spirits to connect with yours? Father, would you send your Holy Spirit amongst us? Father God, just remind us of all of the things that we have to be thankful for this evening. 
of all that you are to us, God, and all that you've done for us. And God, I pray that we would leave tonight not feeling worried or fearful or down or depressed, but knowing that we have spent time in your presence and that you are good and that you are faithful. In Jesus' precious name I pray. Amen. Amen. Please stay standing.
Give me a moment, please. Can you hear me okay? Yep, sounds good. Thank you. Well, this is the first time we've been back here since March. I'm sure it's the same for lots of you. It's like coming home, isn't it? It's good to be here. And um, I'd like to pray before I share this word, please. Heavenly Father, I thank you and I praise you, Lord, for who you are. I pray for everybody here tonight, Lord, and those online, Father, that you will just speak to us through your word, the word that you have given, Lord. And I pray, Father, that we wouldn't just be hearers, but we'd be doers of your word. So come, Holy Spirit, lead us and guide us, I pray, in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 <clears throat> this is the first time I've ever spoken to somebody, or a group of people, with masks on. <laughs> See, if your eyes go closed, I know you're just concentrating, you're not actually asleep. It's hard to get some feedback, isn't there, when you can't see people's faces. But anyway, last week, um, Steve spoke from Isaiah 40, 28 to 31. This happens to be one of my favourite scriptures in all of the Bible. And I won't read it all because we're short of time and I've got a short time to speak. But remember, it says, do not know, have you not heard? It's that scripture where God says he never gets weary or tired, but we do. And it says, even youths grow tired and weary and young men stumble and fall. <clears throat> Um, Steve was encouraging us uh, last week to focus on the greatness of God, the greatness of God. I hope that you'll see that this evening the message fairly neatly dovetails into that same message that Steve was bringing. Alas, uh, myself and some of you are way past that, even youth grow tired and weary. I don't know about you, but I really, really long for the, those days when we can soar on wings of eagles and not grow weary and faint. What an amazing promise that is. So tonight's message is entitled More Than Conquerors. Please forgive me, I'm using paper because the Wi-Fi has gone down, so it's a bit old school. But the good news is that I sell paper for a living, so <laughs> <coughs> we're using lots of paper. Tonight's message is entitled More Than Conquerors. I want to read from Romans 8, 35 to 39. Thank you. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall trouble or hardship or persecution or famine or nakedness or danger or sword? As it is written, for your sake we face death all day long. We are considered as sheep to be slaughtered. Now in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death nor life nor angels nor demons, neither the present nor the future, nor any powers, neither height nor depth nor anything else in creation, in all creation, will a, will able, is able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus, our Lord. I don't know about you, but I don't always feel like a conqueror. Maybe you do. I don't always feel like a conqueror. This scripture reminds us of who we are, to whom we belong, and the victory that Christ has won for us. So I want to spend a few short minutes tonight breaking that down a bit to make sure that you're, you and I are really sure of what the keys to living a life as a conqueror are. And the first key is knowing who you are. I don't know about you, but I love watching babies when they're on that discovery journey, when they first look at their hands and their feet. And they're fascinated by them. They think, what are these for? Usually they put them in their mouth, don't they? They test things by putting them in their mouth. Can I eat it? At around 18 months, children begin to develop reflection self-awareness, which is the next stage of bodily awareness and involves children recognising themselves as reflections and mirrors and pictures. That's when they realise that they're separate entities with impulses, needs, desires, and naturally it develops throughout the rest of their lives. As adults, we understand, as adults, when we understand who we are, we begin to prioritise what's important and ignore what is unnecessary. Most importantly, we are children of the living God. This is backed up in many places in Scripture, but I've chosen a couple. In John 1.12, it says, Yet all who did receive him, to those who believed in his name, he gave them the right to become children of God. And 1 John 3, 1-3 says, See what great love the Father has lavished on us, that we should be called children of God, and that is what we are. The reason the world does not know us is that it does not, did not know him. Dear friends, now we are children of God, and what we will be has not yet been known. 
but we know that when Christ appears, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. We're not only children of God. He also lets us know through his servant Abraham that we're friends of God. When we accept Jesus Christ as our saviour through his blood, he makes us part of a royal family. The Apostle Paul tells us that we're a chosen generation. I think Dan brought that up in the scripture he read. A royal priesthood, a holy nation. The Bible tells us that we're kings and priests, and that means that every Christian has an assignment to minister to others. When we know who we are, it gives us a sense of satisfaction and worth. The ultimate blessing of self-awareness tells us that we matter to God. He wants us to work in us and through us. We are born again to be conquerors, to overcome, to fulfil the task that he has given us. The great news is that we do not have to rely on our own strength. The Lord specialises in using the weak and the meek to achieve his purposes. The Holy Spirit, our helper, empowers our lives to do great feats. The Bible is full of ordinary people, like you and me, living conquering lifestyles because of the power within us. So the first key then is knowing who we are. It empowers our life. Secondly, it's not only important to know who we are, it's also know whose we are. Human beings long to belong. We love to belong to this church, don't we? To come here with the body in this church, we love it. You see, uh, at an early age, when children are in the playground and they ask other people to be their best friend. I don't know if you did that. I went through about four people. Would you be my best friend? <laughs> and nobody wanted to be. <laughs> I was a troubled young child. That was probably, probably wise. Thank you. <laughs> that need is exploited in young people to get them to join gangs. The army focuses on it and says that the strongest driver in battle is comradeship, belonging and supporting the guy next to you. It's one of our greatest human needs. We need to belong. But for Christians... It's crystal clear, isn't it? In Psalm 100, 1 to 3, it says, Shout for the Lord, shout for joy to the Lord, all the earth. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come before him with joyful songs. Know that the Lord is God. It is he who has made us, and we we are his. We are his people, the sheep of his pastures. As Christians, we know whose we are. We belong to the mighty God, almighty God of the universe. The first apostles were not shy about it and made known their apostolic identity. They were glad to furnish apostolic credentials as they wrote the epistles to the New Testament believers. In Galatians starts with, Paul, an apostle, not of man, neither by man, but by Jesus Christ and God the Father who raised him from the dead. And in 2 Peter 1.1 it's Simon Peter, a servant and apostle of Jesus Christ. It's important to know and confess who we are and who we belong to, just as the apostles did. This is really important because our emotional well-being and fundamental development are largely affected by our sense of belonging. In fact, social sciences discovered many years ago that man's need for connectivity. Connecting with other people is important, and it's very unfortunate that today there's so much loneliness around. As society's broken down and families don't live so close, There's a huge amount of loneliness out there. But more importantly, everyone needs a connection to another source of life. And the connection I'm talking about now is the connection with the one who said, I am the way, the truth, and the life, which is John 14, 6. This connection is what makes us more than conquerors. Knowing whose we are helps us overcome the challenges before us because we're not reliant on our own endeavours, but on his power and his authority. Knowing whose we are should instill in us a sense of purpose and destiny. I want to tell you a short story. Um, About 12 or 13 years ago, I was working in a corporate IT business and uh, there was some sort of reshuffle and I got uh, assigned a new uh, senior management team. And one lady in particular, Tracy, was the the head of that division and I was told I was reporting to her. I was a bit frightened, to be fair, because I'd heard of her reputation. She was a real bully she beat up on people all the time, and she was, um, she was quite terrifying. But she asked for a meeting with me. Uh, so I went to the meeting, and she started the meeting by saying, I have no idea what you do, or what you add to the business, or if you're any good at your job. So 
obviously it was going to be quite an intimidating meeting, and I knew her reputation. Um, and she said to you, justify yourself to me. Tell me what you do and what you add to the business. My response was, of course, I'll prove my value to you, um, but I want you to know one thing before we start. And she said, what's that? I said, I want you to know that you don't control my destiny. The Lord God does, and his plans are good for me. Kind of shut the meeting down a bit. She went a bit quiet. Um, it turned out that she was a medium, and she, she did all tarot cards and all sorts of stuff, and she'd never heard. I gave her my testimony and shared the gospel with her. She'd never heard this before, and she was absolutely stunned by this meeting. As it happens, I lost my job anyway. She did get rid of me and some other people. But that day, I felt like a conqueror. I overcame. I had a giant before me, but I trusted in the Lord. And she backed off. I, I often wonder what happened to her, but she really was stunned by this conversation. She said, I've never heard anything like that before. I didn't know about Jesus. I didn't know. She kept on saying, I didn't know. Being confident in the one to whom we belong should give us confidence and enable us to operate in conqueror mode. I love that, conqueror mode. That's what we should be in, conqueror mode. When we do, it enriches, enriches and blesses our lives in so many ways. When we know whose we are, it means the issue of eternal destiny has been settled. Heaven awaits us because we belong to the one that is the resurrection and the life. When we know whose we are, we understand that Christ is never more than a whisper away because his pledge is, I will never leave you or forsake you. When we know whose we are, uh, we understand that we have, we have the strongest, truest, greatest and most loving father the world has ever known. When we know whose we are, we can say with King David, the Lord is my light, my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? That's Psalm 27, verse 1. When we know who we are and whose we are, it creates a sense of victory, or should create a sense of victory. So the key three, the third key, is the first key is know who we are, second key is know whose we are, and the third key is take courage and expect victory. Do you expect victory against the, gi the giants of your life? In any, any sporting endeavour, as the players take the field, there's always a chance that either side could win, however unlikely that is in some cases. I heard the other day that Liverpool beat the Villa. The Villa beat Liverpool 7-2. So. <laughs> oh, Alan's here. I'm sorry, Alan. <laughs> so, you know, it's not decided who has won the victory, but not so for Christians. When Paul said Christians are more than conquerors, he meant that with Christ on our side, even before the contest begins, Satan, before the, the contest with Satan begins, we are more than conquerors. We aren't waiting for the final whistle. Christ has already conquered the enemy of our soul. Amen. Many of us have read the Bible and we know that Christ has won the victory over sin and death. So take courage and expect victory in your circumstance. There's a great, oh, there's many throughout scripture, but there's a great illustration uh, about the conquer attitude in the book of Numbers. And I'm going to read uh, Numbers 13, and we're going to read somewhere between 17 and 13. It will come up, and I've uh, knocked a few of the verses out, if that's okay, because it's too long. Uh, Moses sent, uh, sent them to spy of the land, you'll know this story, of Canaan, and said to them, go up into Negev and go into the hill country, and see what the land is, and whether the people who dwell in it are strong or weak, whether they are few or many. And whether the land they dwell in is good or bad, or whether the cities they dwell in are in camps or strongholds, and whether the land is rich or poor, and whether there are trees in it or not, be of good courage and bring some of the fruit of the land. Now the time was the season of the first ripe grapes. I'm skipping to 25 now. At the end of 40 days they returned from the spying out the land, and they came to Moses and Aaron and all the congregation of the people of Israel in the wilderness of Paran and Kadesh. They brought back the word to them and to all the congregation and showed them the fruit of the land. And they told them, We came to the land to which you sent us. It flows with milk and honey. And this is the fruit. However, the people who dwell in the land are strong and cities are fortified and very large. And besides, we saw the descendants of Anak, who were giants. Jump into 30. But Caleb quieted the people before Moses and said to them, let us go up once and occupy it, for we are able to overcome it. it. Reminds me of young David when Goliath was there, and all the fighting men were standing back and scared to fight him, but 
he went out and said, you know, who is this uncircumcised Philistine? And I'll fight him. That's the same as Caleb. Let's go up and occupy, because um, we can overcome them. Then the men who had gone up with them said, we are not able to go up against the people, for they are stronger than we are. Sometimes we look at our problems, we only see giants. Is that true for you? It looks so much bigger. In the dark of night sometimes, I have these nights when I just can't sleep. I've convinced myself it's all over. And the morning comes, and it all just goes away. So we think we're, we're, we're surrounded by giants. The circumstances of COVID and indeed our daily lives can seem like a battle. I don't know about all of you, um, of all the chats, I don't know of all the challenges that you face, and I can only imagine that some of you are going through some stuff right now that I can't comprehend. But I know that our God has a plan to take you through them. In our lives, there are giants, problems that seem so big. Um, they're against us, and there's all sorts of challenges, but remember, the Lord is leading us to the promised land. He knows the outcome and the plans that he has for us are good. He always works in our best interests. So finally, my prayer is that we all remember those key principles. First of all, know who you are. You are all a child of the Almighty God. Know whose you are. And take courage and expect victory in your circumstances. Christ has already won the victory. We're on the victor's side. And we shouldn't allow these giants to overcome us. Be a Caleb. Be a King David. Stand up against the enemy in your lives. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, I thank you and praise you, Lord, for your word. Lord, I pray for each one here again, once again, Father, and those online. Lord, all of us are facing stuff in our lives, Lord. And um, I pray, Holy Spirit, you'd go before us and win battles, Lord. You'd give us courage, Lord, and to rem be reminded, reminded of who we are, Lord, whose we are, and the victory that you have won on the cross for each one of us, Lord. Help us to be conquerors, more than conquerors in our lives, Father God, because we trust and believe in you. Amen. Amen. I think the, the band are going to lead us another song. Amen.
don't see it, you're working Even when I don't feel it, you're working You never stop, you never stop working You never stop, you never stop working Even when I don't see it, you're working Even when I don't feel it, you're working You never stop, you never stop working Just be still for a moment. Just keep playing, but just get a real sense this evening that God is just speaking directly to some of you. Just laying something on your hearts. And, and, and what I feel that message is, is just the, the, the simple words that you are mine and I love you and I'm going to see you through. You are mine, and I love you, and I'm going to see you through. Let's just be still for a moment. I feel like the message of tonight has been surprisingly clear. <laughs> Thank you, God. It's easy to get distracted, isn't it? It's easy to forget who we are, who we belong to, and the victory that we have. 
about where we started this evening, you know, we, we look at this, the circumstances we're in, the situation that's before us, the bad news. We can quickly feel as though we have no hope. And then as we've sung and we've worshipped and we've spoken about how we are no longer slaves to fear, but we are children of God. And Tim has brought that word this evening reminded us that we are his that we are children of God that we are a royal priest that a chosen generation that that we belong to him and that no one can snatch us from his hands thank you Lord and we have a hope and a future and a victory that is already ours even if sometimes we forget I'm just reminded of um, Paul's words in his second letter to the Corinthians He says, therefore, we do not lose heart. So outwardly, we're wasting away. Inwardly, we are being renewed day by day by day. For our light and momentary troubles are achieving for us an eternal glory that far outweighs them all. And Paul didn't just have a headache. Paul was beaten and stoned and shipwrecked and hurt and punished time and time again. And he says, you know what? It's light and momentary. It's nothing compared to what's coming. And so he concludes, we fix our eyes, not on what is seen, but what is unseen. He says, because what's seen is temporary. It might feel like this is going on now, but it's temporary. And what is unseen is eternal. Heavenly Father, I pray that we would fix our eyes on you this evening. God, for those of us here in this place tonight who have just been feeling lost, just so fed up, just unsure even what the future holds. God, I pray that you would remind them, God, that you would remind all of us that we belong to you that we have been bought with a price, that you are never ever going to let us go and that you have already won that victory. And all of this is light and momentary. You are a faithful God. And you will see us through. Thank you, Jesus. Bless you, Lord.
Amen. Amen. Yeah, Lord, I pray that we would keep that reality, that truth, that knowledge in our hearts as we go forward from this place and into the week. God, that we would go through this week knowing that we are yours, that we belong to you, that you are our heavenly Father, and God, that you are always by our side. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much for being with us this evening. What a blessing it's been. Thank you to the band. We say thank you to these guys. And to Tim for his word as well. That's nice. I feel like clapping might be the new way that we, we praise. That's good. Um, so we... Uh, lovely. It's great. Um, so we uh, unfortunately can't... Um, I know... I'm a, you, got, you guys know me. I'm a hugger. I haven't hugged some of you for so long. And it breaks my heart. But we are going to ask you to just leave. Um, but what I will say to you is if you've, if you've looked across this evening and you waved at someone, or maybe someone you haven't spoken to for a few weeks, a few months even, um, they're going to be in the church directory. Pick up the phone, send them an email, get in touch, you know, look after each other. Um, we can't do that face to face, but we can still do that through the week. And so, um, so we don't get a bottleneck at the door. I'm going to dismiss you a, a section at a time and um, you need to make your way. Uh, remaining two meters apart towards the exit of the building. Thank you very much. Um, so these guys on the left, if you want to head out, if you guys want to wave at them or clap them or whatever you want to do, you can do that, but they're, they're leaving. Yeah.